Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about Amazon Machine Images, or AMIs for short. You've already encountered AMIs quite a few times throughout this course. Uh, when we were launching EC2 instances, we have this screen where we actually select an AMI. Uh, AMIs are available as pre-configured by AWS, such as the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. You can also purchase AMIs on the Amazon Marketplace, or you can create your own AMIs, and that's what we'll be talking about today. So here is our uh, Amazon or AWS account. Let's imagine that we have an EC2 instance uh, running in one of our availability zones. And as usual, we have an EBS volume attached to this uh, instance. And that's where our operating system is sitting and any data that the instance is processing. So what we can do is we can take this whole a setup, we take this EC2 instance, but when we say EC2 instance, of course, that includes the ABS volume because that is where all the data and operating system are. And we can create an image of that, and that will be an AMI, Amazon Machine Image. And just for illustrative purposes, just for this tutorial, I'm going to include this uh, snapshot, EBS snapshot icon over here, um, just to remind us that the AMI includes the EBS uh, snapshot, a snapshot of the EBS volume. Um, and what that does is it saves our instance uh, at a point in time. And uh, let's say we have a project that we want to replicate into another availability zone. We can just simply take that AMI and uh, replicate it, relaunch our instance in another availability zone, and it will have the exact state of the instance as it was at that point in time and all the data that the instance had on the EBS volume. Also, we can copy across the AMI to another region and do the same restoration uh, or launching process in uh, that region as well. So very similar to how we would work with EBS snapshots. A couple of important things to note are that once an AMI is created, you cannot edit it. Uh, you would have to uh, launch it as an instance edit the instance and then create a new AMI. And the other thing is that AMIs, as we can see, are stored in S3 and you are charged for the associated storage costs. So here's a quick text summary of the slide. And one uh, more important thing is that there's two ways of creating AMIs. This is quite an advanced topic, but it's still important to know. So here we've got our EC2 instance with the EBS volume. Uh, the first approach is, as we discussed, to take uh, the EC2 instance and to create an AMI from there um, and we will have our AMI from an EC2 instance and the second approach is actually to take the EBS volume create an EBS snapshot and then create the AMI from the EBS snapshot because we know that the EBS snapshot will have everything we need the operating system the data the state of the instance and therefore these two are identical there are some sm minor differences but they're out of the scope for this course now, uh, this is not always the case though. If we have an EC2 instance with two EBS volumes or more attached and we create uh, an EBS snapshot from one of the volumes, create an AMI from the snapshot, we'll have an AMI like this. But if we uh, take the EC2 instance and create an uh, AMI from the whole instance, then by default, the AMI will include snapshots of each of the EBS volumes attached to this instance. And therefore, these two AMIs are not going to be the same. This is a very important point to remember, especially for an exam. An AMI will include snapshots of each of the EBS volumes. So there we go. There's a text summary. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's tutorial and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy the cloud.